high. So I decided just to do a test run here to see how this goes. Um, long time viewer, first time commenter. So I'm talking about Miss Chantel. Now, I've been watching her for a few years through reaction channels because she's like the best reality show out there, you know, like it just doesn't get better than her. Um, but over the past few days, she has completely gone off the deep end and this is going to be very low budget, low quality. Like I'm not going to insert clips or anything because, um, there's one YouTuber. I don't want to call anyone out because I don't know anybody in the community personally very well, but like I watch one girl's YouTube videos and she's always saying how she's low tech and, and I'm like, mm, same girl, me too. <laughs> so I figure if she can do it, I can do it. And this is just kind of like a dry run to see how I'm received. Not that it matters, <laughs> I guess. Um, but just to feel it out to see, you know, what kind of community I can create. Um, so let's see. Um, so a few things about me. Um, I am sober. I've been sober for 20 years. I don't look my age. I'm actually older than Chantel. Um, and I've, I've been sober longer than I've been drunk at this point. Honestly, I'm one of the lucky few people. I got sober extremely young um, with my whole life ahead of me. People in 12-step programs, because yes, I was a member of 12-step programs. I'm currently not due to COVID, um, but I still practice the principles of 12-step programs. Um, anyways, when I got sober, there was a lot of people in the rooms who were um, 20, 30 years older than me saying, you know, don't let this be your life. And for some reason that resonated with me. Um, when I, the year I got sober, I lost a family member to heroin. Um, and, you know, it, it, I, I, I didn't want that to be my life and I had no reason to think they were lying. So I got sober and 20 years later, I'm still here <laughs> sober and I watched Chantel. Now first, you know, I don't have any personal experience with um, binge eating disorder. I'm not a licensed professional. I know I have to put the disclaimers out there. You know, I'm just someone who got sober <laughs> and stayed sober. Um, but a few things she's been doing lately that has really bothered me is driving while eating edibles. Now, I've yet to enjoy marijuana legally. <laughs> so the last time I smoked marijuana, it was certainly illegal where I live and it's legal now here. And I, I even voted for legalization of marijuana. And honestly, I smell it all the freaking time and it gives me a headache and I'm not interested in smoking it, you know, like I'm just not. Um, but I don't care if other people do. I just wish like people didn't have it on them sometimes because sometimes it gives me such a bad headache. But, you know, I don't care. Like if she's in her privacy of her home and she's eating edibles and whatever, like, girl, you do you. If that's what you want to do, have at it. I don't care. But she's like, I know about edibles because I used to make, you know, pot brownies and pot butter. And I, th I made pot mac and cheese once. It was disgusting, by the way. <laughs> but I've been as high as she has been at times. Like, la like her live stream last night, I was, my jaw was on the floor. Like, you, she was so high. I'm pretty sure she was hallucinating because I've gotten that high before off of um, hash. Um, I had a coworker at my, at a job I worked at when I was not sober, clearly. Um, this is like back in the late nineties. Like I said, I'm older than Chantel and I wouldn't lie about that. Trust me. I wouldn't say I'm older than Chantel if I wasn't, because why would I want to do that? You know what I mean? I'm older than Chantel. Um, back in the late nineties, uh, there was a guy, he went to Amsterdam and he brought back some hash and he gave me some and I was like, woohoo. And I enjoyed that shit and I got so 
freaking high that the walls were breathing. And I was just like, whoa. So I'm watching her last night and I'm like, girl, this ain't right. And I'm reading her, you know, her viewers. I have a serious issue with her viewers. How do they have the time to be on her live stream? Like her lives are a full-time job. How do these people have this kind of time to devote? Like I'll jump in and out here and there. And I'm honestly, I've honestly up until this point been afraid that I would get blocked and stuff. And because her viewers are so rabid, like I just, for me, I don't have the time to fight with people I don't know on the internet. Like, to be honest, like, does Chantel's life really affect me? No. Um, is it enough for me to, like, waste my energy and my time fighting with freaking Karate Joe in, in her live stream just to get blocked? Not really. But at this point, I'm willing to, to take some punches out, you know, to throw down because she's going to die. That's the reality. She's admitting that she went to sleep last night without her CPAP machine on. Like, girl, you ain't bulletproof, grow up. And she's sitting here talking about how she doesn't test her blood sugar, she doesn't take her meds because she needs to get into a routine. Girl, you don't get into a routine with diabetes, you do it, the end. If you don't want diabetes, then you need to stop eating chicken Parmesan and freaking cannolis, which by the way, her cannolis look disgusting. I'm just going to say it. I have yet to see a decent looking cannoli. It's just, it's, it might just be me. It's just my opinion. But honestly, all her food is just tif different shades of beige. And it does not look appealing to me at all. Nothing she eats looks appetizing. She is addicted to food. And then she has the audacity to come on her latest live stream, which by the way, uh, last I checked, her comments and her like dislike ratios are turned off. And I was just gonna straight up leave a comment on her video. And I was like, oh, oh, you're turning off your comments. I wonder why you wanna do that. So here I am. Um, but like, <laughs> girl, you're 37 years old. Grow up. You have health problems that you need to address. And you have the audacity to be on your live when one of one concerned person, like the one concerned person who's like, I think you have a problem, which I agree with that viewer. I couldn't actually see the chat because I came in after the chat was over. But this person apparently said, I think something to the, offend, the effect of, I think you have a problem, which I, I was doing my makeup at the time. I was like, yeah, she does have a problem. <laughs> Like, it's obvious. And she's like, mm, I don't think I have a problem. I don't have an addiction. Trust me. And then she gave this laugh. And I was like, <laughs> that's the shit I used to say. I don't have a problem. I can stop any time. I said that two, three, four times a day. I was on vacation in Hawaii. And I had total strangers telling me they think I had a problem. Like people who didn't even know me, who just watched, interacted with me for 20 minutes was like, whoa whoa, that's a bridge too far, girl. And I was like, well, this is how I always am. What's the problem? And they were like, mm, <laughs> you don't see a problem with your, okay. Oh shit. <laughs> like seriously. And I look back on the things they said and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it was insanity. It was rinse and repeat. And like, and then people telling me who interacted with me at bars or or house parties or wherever the hell I was, um, wherever I crashed. Cause seriously, I was just, ugh, I was a train wreck. And they would all be like, oh my God, this girl is crazy. And I'd be like, <laughs> and they'd be like, no, it's not a compliment. <laughs> and like, she's like, why, why are you so hell bent to be like I was? Because you are. Maybe you didn't do the things exactly. Like I did a lot of different kinds of drugs. You name it, I probably did it at least one time. Um, and I definitely did weed like almost every day. So I can totally relate to her and just her, the way she lives, her house, how dirty it is. Like weed, cannibal, cannabis, 
edibles, whatever you want to call it, that shit robs you of your ambition. And she already doesn't have much to begin with. So <laughs> it's just, she needs to take a step away from her live streams. She needs to, she needs to save her life at this point. Um, so I've been watching and now it's to the point where I'm like, I don't feel comfortable watching this because I feel like at any given moment she could just pass away in the night because she's passing out without her CPAP machine on, which anything can happen. Um, she's driving while under the influence. Don't tell me she's not. She, she had, I bet if a cop pulled her over and they did a blood test, she would come up positive for THC. That shit stays in your system for quite a while. So don't tell me she's not putting other people at risk for, for her own selfish means. And that's all it is. It's, it's driven by 100% selfishness. Whatever issues she has had in her life, whatever validation she's searching for, she's not going to find it with her viewers. Her viewers are just as messed up as she is, if not more. They're not even fans. They're just enablers. They're just people probably doing the exact same thing she is and are just happy that they have someone who won't judge them, which is just code for call you out on your bullshit. I see it as like, I call it like I see it, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, I know I didn't touch on everything and I'm sure there'll be other things I thought of. And you know, if you like what you see, 43 years old, 20 years sober, me, um, then let me know because I, I'm a fast learner. I've never actually formally put out YouTube videos before. I've watched YouTube for 10 years. It's sometimes it's more entertaining than actual TV, to be honest. So um, I've just never been interested in, in creating videos until today where it's like, well, I got something to say because I'm genuinely concerned at this point where it's like, girl, what are you doing with your life? Like, please stop. Like, the thing is, she sits there, oh, okay, I have one more thing to say. This is my life, this is what I do. She wants to go on these trips and like, I am here for it because, you know, like her, you know, I sat on a bar or stool and was like, oh, I'm gonna go do all these great things. I'm gonna go to Australia, I'm gonna go to Hawaii. I'm gonna go do all these things um, next, you know, tomorrow, always, you know. But the reality is, <laughs> I didn't get to have that kind of life until I got sober and, and really took a good hard look at myself and who I am as a person and really took steps to, to change so that I wouldn't be drunk Rachel. So, and then once I did that, once I worked on myself and, and took the steps, then I got to live. I got to experience things. I've done things that I never thought in a million years I would get to do. I've traveled. I've, I mean, I, hopefully this summer I get to go to Ireland, which I'm really hoping for COVID permitting. And I'm fully vaccinated at this point. And, um, I, I too want to travel and experience other cultures and other lifestyles. And like, I'm itching to go. I'm, you know, next month I'm going to Boston to visit a friend who has been socially distanced. I'm vaccinated. I will take precautions and, you know, it's a very, very short trip, but you know, it's just like, I get to live my life. Like I get to have a life. I get to be like, well, do you want to go visit your friend in Boston? Okay. Airfare's relatively cheap. I have a place to stay. It's going to be a really cheap trip. I'll be gone for less than five days. Why not? And I see Chantel being like, oh, someday I'll go to the Dominican Republic. Someday I'll go to Europe. It's like, girl, you could have that. If you would just get out of your own way, you could have all that. And I want that for her. I really do. I would love to see her running around, beezing around Europe. But the reality is, as she is right now, there is no way she could make it through a European trip. Not that I personally know, but I just, I have a feeling I'm not wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just have a feeling I'm not wrong. 
<laughs> I feel like it would involve a lot of walking. Okay. Like I've heard how big like the Louvre is. Um, you walk up a hill. <laughs> like, how are you going? <laughs> Sorry. I'm not laughing. It's just like, I'm laughing at the insanity. You know what I mean? Like, it's just insane that she thinks this and she's so delusional. And I understand that delusion. But, you know, I wish, I wish for Chantel to get out of her own way and live a life she deserves because she's made some bad decisions, but I don't believe she's a bad person. I just think she's made some bad choices and um, hopefully she can come out on the other side and save her life. But if she keeps doing what she's doing and listen to people like Karate Joe and Marissa and Danielle, they're just nails in her coffin. And that's a good place to stop. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, it's very low quality. I didn't put in any clips or anything fancy. I'm not going to have a fancy intro or outro. Um, I'll probably just screen grab a thumbnail. <laughs> but all the same, I appreciate you, whoever you are. <laughs> however small however little this is received it's all good it just feels good to purge it out if that's all I do so thanks